Welcome to MEI Modeling with Algorithms. We're on the topic of Linear Programming 1, Introduction, and this is video 1.3, Graphical Solution using the Objective Line method. Now, just to recap from the previous video, in that video we were looking at this linear programming problem which had been formulated as follows. So, X and Y were representing numbers of two different types of shed. We had an objective function given to us which was p equals 60x plus 84y and we had the constraints 2x plus 3y is less than equal to 30 and 5x plus 5y is less than equal to 60 plus the two natural constraints of x and y both being greater than or equal to 0 um, and then what we did is we plotted all of those constraints onto a graph leaving the feasible region which was the region that satisfied all of the constraints and what we know is that whatever the point um, given by the values x and y is that maximizes the objective function it must lie somewhere on the feasible region and in the vertex method that we saw we realized that it would have to be at one of the vertices so here 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 or here that gave us four values to test four positions to test and we pick the one with the highest value of p now um, the slight drawback of that, of course, is that we might have lots and lots of vertices. And the more we have, the more calculations we're going to need to do. And if we're finding those points by solving simultaneous equations, that's going to take a very long time indeed, potentially. And even, and we are allowed to use calculators within this spec, but even if we use calculators to solve the simultaneous equations for us, it's still going to be a fair bit of work to test every single vertex. What the objective line method does is actually allow us to do things in a very different way um, and actually avoids having to do any kind of explicit calculation on all the different vertices that we have. So I'm just going to briefly show you what the objective method, objective line method looks like. Now the idea is that we, within the feasible region, somewhere within the feasible region, we draw a line of constant p. So if we pick a, a value, any value of p we like, and, and sort of fix that temporarily, then that will give us a line like that. And the, the gradient of that line will be determined by these two numbers. If I was to rearrange this equation to make y the subject, then I would see in the form y equals mx plus c, I would see that it had a gradient cross-point the gradient of that line. And if I was then to change the value of p, well, the gradient is determined by these two numbers, so changing p will not change the gradient of the line. Changing p will just move the line up or down. And because these are two positive coefficients, what that means is that as p increases, that line is going to move further and further um, in that direction. It will move, of course, in a direction which is perpendicular to it. So if I want to increase the value of p, then I need to move in that direction and I'll drag that line along with me and I'll see then wh what point am I left with a single point which has the highest possible value of P and to help us do that what we can do is having drawn that line um, take a ruler and then slide that ruler maintaining its direction until there's just a single point remaining that is on the line and is still in the feasible region. Now it is important to make sure that, you, that you're that you accurate there. If you need to then draw more lines further up, plotting them accurately, uh, making sure that the gradient is equal to the gradient of this line which you can obtain by rearranging the equation if you need to. Uh, and what we see then is that, that we're left with that point there which is uh, 6, 6 and that was actually the same point that we found earlier wasn't it in, in the previous video using the vertex method but we haven't really had to consider any of the other vertices there other than the fact that they just naturally disappear as I move that ruler up the graph. So as we found before we've established that the uh, place we want to be is 6, 6 and then the final thing to do is to put that into the objective function and work out the value and of course just as it was in the previous video it's 864 pounds. Uh, so that concludes video 1.3, graphical solutions using the objective line method. 
the next video 1.4 will be uh, graphical solutions again but this time looking at when we are restricted to integer solutions